Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, Penn National again, Penn National Golf Club in Fayetteville, uh, Pennsylvania. So I decided to go ahead and play the other course, the Founders course, after playing the Iron Forge course, just for continuity's sake. Uh, of course, there were pros and cons for doing this or not doing it, but um, I just decided that, uh, number one, I didn't want to um, really forget too much about what it was like to play the uh, Iron Forge course. And second, it rained in the D.C. area all week from Friday and Saturday, and I figured it was going to be soaked on Sunday, so I was able to take off Monday and go up and play, and that meant uh, Sunday, uh, Monday, uh, I was just free to go there and play during the day and not have to worry about traffic and all this kind of stuff, so I went ahead and booked a tee time to play the Founders course and uh, got almost into Hagerstown, going up 70. And I was running a little bit late already. Got there, got to the middle of you know um, seventy between uh, Frederick and Hagerstown, and sure enough, the highway came to a complete stop. And I'm like going, "Oh shit!" And I was really in this weird kind of um, situation where I was thinking about just canceling it and doing it another day, and you know, um, finding. Uh, an alternate route up there calling for a later tea time. I ended up doing the ladder. I was just able to go through um, Hagerstown on Route 40, catch the top of uh, 70 north of uh, northwest of uh, Frederick, Hagerstown, sorry, and get to the course an hour early. Got there an hour early, had plenty of time to dawdle around in a parking lot and so forth. I ended up buying a bucket of balls, but I didn't hit it. I didn't have time. So by the time I got all my stuff out of the cart and got up to the course, um, to the uh, clubhouse proper, uh, my tea time was about to start in about 10 minutes. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because sometimes golf is not about the course as much as it is about the trip up to the course and back and just being able to get yourself all settled get your equipment you know in order get your shafts on the right heads and and not rush not fight not struggle you know to get to the course and get on the course and so forth and this course unfortunately has this weird problem with the gps uh control of the carts where it's a lot like the um Another course I played, which I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it, it restricts you from going into parking lots with the carts. But you can. It depends on how you get there, you know, and so forth and so on. And it's, so it's kind of a struggle. And uh, I just, you know, think you should, you know, be aware that there were a lot of frustrated people at that course that day because of the carts. Anyway, so I hope they've settled it out by now. Uh, so the other thing is... The other thing is that basically um, there's still an issue, I think, on the Founders course with road noise, but it's not nearly as much of an issue uh, as it is on the Iron, what is it, Iron Forge? Yeah, of course. Um, because there aren't as many roads that run around the uh, Founders course as there are uh, that run around or through the um, Iron Forge course. So, despite the fact that there isn't really much noise on this course, there still is one hole. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's the number was well, two up. The number eight, number seven for sure on the founders, and uh, also the uh, first hole that you hit when you go back there, which is I think about number five. Yeah, the number five um, tee shot is right there next to the road. But uh, it's also number eight runs alongside the road. But other than that, on the Founders course, the road noise is not really a big issue. What is uh, more of an issue on the Founders course is the housing. Now, certainly the um, 
the housing on the Founders course is much more uh, intense than it is on the, the Iron Forge course. However, it's only in certain places on the Founders course that the housing is really a problem. And that's mainly because they do have um, pretty good offset, if you want to call it that, between the fairway and the, the back of a house. So you remember, you've got to have the house, the backyard of the house, the OB markers, the uh, rough, then trees, because there's a lot more trees on the Founders course than on the Iron Forge course. Um, then the fairway rough, and then the fairway. So there's a lot going on there. And it's, I, I can't say that I didn't hit OB or, you know, I did. I hit OB, you know, two or three times. I even shelled a house in this course once. So I'm not going to really mention um, more about that. But let's just say I did shell a house once. And luckily it was a house under construction and not a house where somebody actually lived there. But um, it does matter how far the houses are away from the fairway. I, I think it's absolutely, you have to take into account the fairway, the edge of the fairway to the person's backyard, okay? Or the, the, the houses that run alongside the fairway. Now I have certainly, some of my um, regular courses have parts of the house, parts of the course where the, you know, the, the house backyard is right next to the tee box or or literally just off the fairway. It's just as easy as pie to hit into their into their backyards if you're not careful on several holes. So this course, I can't say it was bad. I mean, it's certainly not as bad as a lot of courses I've seen in that regard. Many courses that have houses on the on the fairways or, or so forth. It's not that bad at all, but at the same time, it's not like they're not there. there and it, there's a certain minimum interference from having houses on the course doesn't matter how many houses there are per hole doesn't matter how far away they are from the fairway it's still a distraction uh, especially if you're like me and I when I'm out playing and pretty, especially if I'm playing by myself I, I get fairly talkative so I'm like talking to myself you know almost constantly when I'm playing golf and I certainly can hear other people talking on the course I hear other players talking I hear people that live in these houses talking. So one of the things that uh, distracts me when I'm playing is when I'm talking to myself and then I hear somebody else talking and I know that there's houses out there where there are people that hear me talking. You know, it, it's just, it just kind of gets in your, in my head at least it does anyway. So um, I have to give this course some kind of strike for the fact that it has so many houses on the course. But it's not a bad course. It's it's fairly lush. I, I didn't see any real problems with the, um, certainly after two days with rain. I don't know if it rained all, day, all that time. I know it didn't rain one day, but certainly um, it, they had at least one day of rain up there. Everything's nice and green. The trees are not completely full of leaves and stuff, but they're, you know, mostly, you know, there are leaves on some of the trees. As a matter of fact, you know, I was actually impressed by some of the trees they have up there, how nice they are. And just being trees, they're really well in good great health <laughs> let's put it that way uh but um all in all not a bad course it certainly has decent color decent variety decent uh landscaping it's got uh this pond that's in the middle of the course and it's a nice place it it really is i wouldn't say the founders course is so much better than iron forge it's it's definitely different i wouldn't say that i would rather play the founders course than iron core iron forge it's definitely a different course. What I would say without question is that I found the Founders course to be a harder course to play than the Iron Forge course. And not just because one of the holes on the Founders is 620 yards from the back tees and they only have a 605 yard hole on the Iron Forge course. It's because frankly, it is absolutely true that even on a flat course, when you put trees on the sides of the fairways, uh, it does cut down your shot options. I mean, you have to play into that row of trees. You have to not only have to play into it, but you also have to make sure the ball doesn't go rolling into the trees. Okay, so 
uh, the second thing is when you have houses on or near the fairway, you have to be careful not to have a ball leap off your club and go shooting off into someone's backyard or almost hit their house or something. And when a course is wide open, you don't have to worry about that so much. It's like, okay, that one got away, you know, all right, fine. You know, I'll, I can accept that. It's, it's just a lot easier to play a course when you don't have to worry about bad shots hitting someone's house or going off into someone's backyard. So the trees are, are, are a different problem. They're a problem, but they're at a different level. I mean, you, you just have a red zone. You don't want to hit somebody's house. You don't want to play into somebody's backyard. So that's one thing. Second thing is the trees, water, you know, anything like that where you could lose a ball into it or it's a bad place to hit, but it's not, you know, an emerge and it, it's not like DEFCON 5 if you do that. Now, I know some people play golf and some people will go into somebody's backyard and some people will hit somebody's house. And they'll be like, hey, whatever, baby, sorry, bye. And it's, you hear it's it's golf is one of those things that's affected by, you know, idiots and assholes as much as anything else you you get an idiot or, a, idiot or an asshole with a golf club in their hand you know someone's gonna suffer it's just how it is and i understand that but i'm not one of those people who like to go intruding into someone's backyard or, or intruding in their life or intruding in their house and i really I don't like it when people do the same thing to me when i'm playing golf when i see people riding around the golf course with their stereo playing that pisses me off. I mean, and much less when I could hear it 300 yards away, you know, that some guy's playing music in his cart. Um, or there's two guys with two carts playing different songs, leaving their carts at the tee box next to where I'm playing and going off and doing whatever at the tee box. All these little things about golf definitely upset me. But I also feel like if you're crazy enough to buy a, a house next to a golf course, you know, I'm not saying you deserve it, but I am, I am thinking you had to know what you're getting into. I mean, if you didn't know what you're getting into, then you made a mistake. Okay. You made a big mistake, but at the same time, I, I've seen enough crap in enough houses to know there is no law that says you will not be annoyed in your house. There's just no law that says that there's always going to be some idiot kids running around causing trouble there's always going to be some idiot asshole that lives in the neighborhood causing trouble there's going to be people driving through that don't live there and cause trouble and this is just life i mean it you just have to understand in life that you cannot go through life without being annoyed by assholes that's just how it is it, it's just part of life so golf is often a respite from this. It often is, but sometimes it's off. Is it's often a focus, a lens that focuses, you know, the wrong asshole in the wrong place in life, you know, on you, and it spreads his joy on everyone in your shot. It's just how it is. So, um, in life, in a larger scheme of things, we have to understand. We have to take into account in life that some places are more focusing and more full of assholes than other places. This course was not a bad place at all. I have, I mean, it was just really nice place to play golf. However, I was playing during the week on a nice day in May. You know, there was still somebody out there sawing uh, a tree or something. There's still people cutting lawns at four o'clock on, on a Monday morning, Monday afternoon. It's, it just, you just can't get away from it. And it's just one of those things, the more people there are on and around the course, the more distractions there will be. That's just life. So um, I can tell you, I will drop this as an aside, there are three or four other courses within like a two mile drive of this course um, that I will be checking out at some point. Um, not hopefully right up in the immediate uh, future, but there's plenty of other courses up here to play that have promise. I have not played uh, a course out west for a while and I will be somehow making a trip out west to, to play in Arizona or something um, sometime soon. Certainly Tennessee. Um, might swing through Kentucky, Tennessee and um, on my way out to, um, to Arizona and come back. I've been trying to do this for about a year now. 
so we will see some other courses in other areas and, and you know that's how it is but the founders course i can just say basically it's a nice course um plenty of um greenside rough you know borderline very challenging very deep stuff enough obstructions around the greens we have to be careful not to hit it long but it's not going to kill you um unless you hit something and the ball ricochets off something it goes off and you know crosses the road and whatever um it's a nice place to play and it, it wasn't really expensive it was fifty dollars for a tea time after uh two o'clock on a monday um through golf now and i certainly had a good time playing it but i gotta tell you it was really exhausting i just but the whole gestalt of that whole thing um certainly i played um i was a little bit overdressed because i wanted to make sure I stayed warm between holes. It, it was just a very exhausting round and I was very glad to finish it. I mean, it was good golf. I enjoyed it. It was a, it was a lot of um, fun to play it and a lot of a good challenge. Um, roughly so one, 137, 6,800 yards from the back tees. Um, but it was, it was tiring. I got, I just have to say that uh, a hot day on the, on the um, slightly humid side and sun just blasting down, you know, not a cloud in the sky. I, I was lucky for the shade from the trees. There was almost no wind on the course except for one or two holes where it was too windy. And then, you know, it's, it's just driving around, hearing this, doing us all this stuff. And I, you know, I, I, I was very happy to finish. I'm going to tell you that right now. I sat down for like 20 minutes and just chilled out. But it was a good course uh, in, the, in the long run, I have to admit it. That's the Founders course at uh, Penn National Golf Course in Fayetteville, Virginia. I will, I will give it a B, slightly less than a B star. I don't think it was really, you know, all that of a course. But it, it does have a lot of good points to it. Um, you take the verticality and add that to the course. Uh, there are some definitely some challenging um, uphill and downhill um, shots on that course. I'm just not really sure it was a fun course. It was it was definitely a solid course, but I don't know if I would call it a fun round. I think I had more fun playing the uh, Iron Forge course just because it had less to worry about on the course. You go out there, hit balls, and just have a great time. Um, the Founders course was prop was certainly, I think, a more of a mental challenge and more of a physical, just, just kind of wore me down. I don't know what it was. I just did not really feel like I enjoyed the round as much as I did the Founders, uh, the Iron Forge course. But if you, if you're looking for a good challenge of golf, the Founders course is definitely a good challenge. That's the Founders course at Penn National Golf club in Fayetteville, Pennsylvania. A decent B, B star, somewhere between B and B star course.